volumes and measures. In this lecture, we're just going to learn about the units that you're going to be measuring things in in a pharmacy. It's not a very long lecture, but really it's not very difficult either. I just want you to get familiar with dealing with these types of numbers and these types of units as we go through it. Let's take a look at the first slide. The first slide will show our liquid measurements. The basis of almost every liquid measurement we do will be the milliliter, the milliliter. Sometimes you'll see the milliliter referred to as one cc, which stands for cubic centimeter. Um, so one milliliter equals the exact same thing as one cubic centimeter. A thousand milliliters, however, you know that as a liter, or maybe you know it better as a two liter, like a two liter bottle of Coke. Two liters of Coke is 2,000 milliliters. Um, let's on go down to what five milliliters is. Five milliliters is one teaspoon. So whenever the doctor writes take one teaspoon by mouth twice a day, they're saying take five mils by mouth twice a day. Moving on down to the next one is tablespoon. There are three teaspoons in a tablespoon. Why? because a tablespoon is 15 milliliters, which is three times the size of a teaspoon. Easy to figure out, and we can blow right through this because it is fairly simple. If you're having trouble memorizing it, maybe some flashcards or something like that. Moving on to the right side of the slide, I have an ounce, which is 30 milliliters. One ounce is 30 milliliters, and a pint, which is 480 milliliters. Now, if you'll buy something that comes in a pint, you'll notice that it comes in like, say, 473 milliliters. Many times there's some rounding that's going on, or many times they, uh, it's a manufacturing process um, where maybe it's just easy for them to do 480 milliliters, but usually it's a product of rounding. Also, there's a cup, which is eight ounces, and there's a gallon, which is eight pints. Now, notice I could say a cup, or I could say eight ounces, or I could say 240 milliliters. All of them are the same thing. I want you to be able to convert between these. Um, if I ask how many teaspoons is in an ounce, how many uh, tablespoons are in a pint, any of that, I want you to be able to do that math and figure it out. We'll get into that in a couple lectures later, which is just called conversions. But uh, really, you ought to be able to see how it's going to work already just from looking at this uh, data. A few more liquid measurements, and I already mentioned the tablespoon, which is above, but I want you to notice there's so many ways to say it. I could say three teaspoons, I could say 15 mils, or I could say a tablespoon. All the same thing. Two tablespoons in an ounce, 16 ounces in a pint, two pints in a quart, and four quarts in a gallon. Um, all those, we can say them numerous ways, and you can manipulate the numbers yourself to see that that is the case. On the right side, I put it over there by itself because I do think it's important. And that is 20 drops, GTT meaning drops, per milliliter. So if uh, you're trying to figure out a day's supply for a eye drop, and you're figuring out, oh, they're going to use four drops in each eye twice a day, and it's a seven mil bottle, you need to find out how long that bottle would last. You're going to have to figure out day's supplies, um, and sometimes the math isn't just uh, real apparent to you. It's not always 30 capsules one a day for 30 days. Sometimes they have to do a little bit of math and figuring out how many drops they'll use or mils they'll use per dose, then per day, and then for how long it's going to take before that bottle runs out. So be prepared to do that. Come up with some on your own. I'll quiz you on a few of these in the upcoming quizzes as well just to make sure you're learning it. All right, solid measurements. So I did the liquid measurements in the last two slides. Now let's talk about the solid measurements that you'll have to deal with. Just like the mill was kind of our base and our unit in uh, the previous slides, here it's going to be the milligram and the gram. Okay, so we'll start with just the gram, which is a thousand milligrams. For you uh, people that are really picking up things fit fast, you're understanding that 1,000 equals milli. Uh, 1,000 equals milli, like a, a millennium is a thousand years. So a thousand grams or a thousand uh, milligrams equals one gram. Um, so again, 1,000 milligrams is one gram. 1,000 grams is a kilogram. 1,000 grams is a kilogram. And then 1,000, now pay attention to this, micrograms is one milligram. So you notice we're going by 1,000 up or down every time, every time we switch to a different unit. Notice also on micrograms, I can have that little pretty U with a G. That is micrograms. It's not just grams or anything crazy like that. It's micrograms. Next, let's talk about one pound is 454 grams 
Real good flash card to make there. Just know it. One pound, 454 grams. And then one ounce, just like one fluid ounce was 30 mils, one solid ounce is 30 grams. And then 16 ounces make a pound. Good one to know right there. Last slide on this lecture, and that's other measurements you just might run into. I want you to be familiar with these. They're not as common that you're going to uh, deal with them, but nonetheless, you want to be familiar with them at the least. And that is the grain. Um, it was an old method of weighing things back, uh, in, in, not in the modern era, uh, but in a previous era. Grains were how many things were measured. One grain equals 65 milligrams. Sometimes you'll see that as 60 milligrams. Um, but I'm thinking of a drug called Armour Thyroid. Uh, many of your thyroid medications are measured in grains, and you'll see it in one grain is 65, and then a half a grain, remember SS equal, equals a half, half a grain equals 30 milligrams. Now I want you to know, you're thinking, well you told me one grain was 65. Well it's 65 or 60, and the half a grain is 30. Just remember both numbers, because either of them could come into play. It was an old system and it isn't as exact as the current system. And then two more on the right side and that's milliequivalents in international units. Milliequivalents you'll usually see in electrolyte solutions like potassium or, or any other type of thing that you might see on a Gatorade bottle. And then the last one on here is IU or international units. If you'll go to your medicine cabinet right now, pick out a multivitamin, you'll see on the back that many of the vitamins are expressed not in milligrams but in IUs, which is international units. Um, it's just a different way of saying them. For instance, I take vitamin D 5,000 international units um, each day. So it isn't in milligrams, it isn't stated in grams or anything like that, it's stated in international units. So I want you to be able to be familiar with that as well. That's it for the volumes and measures. Be familiar with these terms. Be familiar with the numbers. Really get ready as we go on through the lecture to be able to convert from grams to milligrams to micrograms, maybe from uh, milliliters to liters to teaspoons to ounces. Um, be able to convert back and forth with all of those. Well, I'll have some quizzes that'll help you just really reinforce that, but I'll also uh, just want you to do some self-study on it. Take a look at the supplementary material make up your own questions. Uh, we'll get into the converting more on a further lecture, but really be ready to look into these because if you don't know these, you're not going to be able to do pharmacy math. Let's move on to the next lecture.